Hey guys, it's Peyton and today I'm going to be talking about the books that I read in November. So November, what was that voice crack I just had? I think it just shows how bad November went. I only read three books, which I know three books is a lot for some people. Some people don't read it all. So I'm not a loser here. Okay. I'm not a loser. I'm just trying to convince myself I'm not a loser right now. I did get halfway through a fourth one. I'm going to mention that one as well. And one of them I read for school. College ruined my life, but guess what? I'm on my final week of this semester. December is going to be everything. If I do not come here with at least eight books read in December, y'all can destroy me in the comments like it's over also if you haven't noticed i got a haircut and a little bit of blonde highlights so i'm like really fashionable today <laughs> let me know what you think of it if you hate it don't tell me <laughs> so the first book that i read was the one for school i'm definitely not going to be talking too much about it because honestly most of the time when i read a book for class i don't pay attention the way that i should with it it's an issue sometimes if i'm really enjoying the book they assign i actually end up like putting my full attention towards it and i'm fully invested in the book but this just wasn't one of those times unfortunately but i read my antonia by awilla cather and it wasn't bad by any means i think i gave it a three to five stars or i didn't rate it at all let's check goodreads so i didn't rate the book if i did have to write the book i'd probably give it like a three but i just don't feel like it is worthy of a rating only because I just don't feel like I gave it the attention it needed. But this one is pretty much about a girl named Antonia. She immigrates from Bohemia. That's what it's called in this time. But I think Bohemia is actually Czechoslovakia in modern day. And she immigrates to this town in Nebraska. She meets our main character, Jim, and they grow up as friends. It's pretty much just a friendship book. I thought they were gonna end up together. Like I thought it was gonna be like a little love story. But it's actually kind of a cute thing where it goes throughout their whole lives and them just meeting up again and like just seeing each other as friends. It can be a sweet thing. I just don't feel like I gave it to the attention it deserved for me to even have an opinion on it. <laughs> I think I probably titled this video of me finding a new favorite book. And I definitely read a freaking amazing book for this month. So that makes up for the shitty amount of books I read because this one was just that good. Y'all all need to read it. It's not out yet. I manifested getting an arc of this book. I wanted it so bad and I actually should have a reading vlog up for it already. So if you want to check it out, you should definitely do that because I'm not going to go too in depth on my thoughts on it the way I did in my reading vlog. So the book is One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. Now this is the author of Red, White, and Royal Blue, which is one of my favorite books of all time. I think it came out in 2019 and I absolutely loved it. But this one, I wanted this one since the moment I read Red, White, and Royal Blue because I knew that this one was a female female romance written by the same author and the way that Red, White, and Royal Blue was done was just my favorite type of romance. I love how thick her books are. That's a gripe a lot of people have with her books but I love it because I feel like I'm able to fully invest myself in the characters and actually care about them individually so when they start to develop a romance I start to care more. I feel like oftentimes with contemporaries they flop for me because I'm not able to care. A lot of the times they're just so short that it's too short for me. And I feel like Casey McQuiston, at least for me, has like mastered the art of a contemporary romance. It's also an adult book, so there's definitely like sexual content in here. So if you're not here for that, maybe skip this one. But honestly, it's not too much. I'm not going to talk too much about it. It comes out June next year. It's actually coming out my birthday week. And I just, I love that for me because I feel like it's a gift to me and it ended up being everything. Obviously it's five out of five stars. So the basic premise that's on the back of the book, so I don't spoil you or anything, is it's about 23 year old August. She is moving to New York City and she's going to go to a college there. She has transferred colleges several times and she's still in college. Like she is still pushing through. She's changed her major several times. She has had, kind of had a hard time like finding herself, finding her topic or whatever she's like super interested in and what she wants to 
do for the rest of her life. She moves in with a bunch of roommates who end up being really interesting side characters. I loved them all so much. And every day she takes a train or the subway. She starts to see this girl named Jane. Jane's right here. Every day they're on the same train. It's almost like really weird because how do you see the same person every single day? Like how is the timing working out so well? Well, things get weirder. It says it on the back of the book, so I'm not spoiling you. August starts to realize that possibly Jane is not from this time period. She might actually be from the 1970s. So there's a bit of a time warp situation going on in this book, and it's just like so mysterious. And I think that's one of my favorite parts about this book, because it had such a mystery. Not only was there a cute relationship developing, but there was a mystery to keep me going. The plot was really freaking like exciting, at least for me. I I loved it so much and it's definitely one of those books that will stick with me forever. So the next book that I read was The Diviners by Libba Bray. I have been listening to this book on audio since like October. I just now finished it like yesterday. For some reason it's just taking me so long probably because it's huge. You know I was just listening to it whenever I had the chance to. I gave it a four out of five stars and honestly I feel like this book has the potential to be a five star read for me but since I listened to it on audio throughout like a two month time span. I just don't think I gave it the attention it deserved for me to fully fall in love with the book because I was really enjoying it. I was definitely entertained. I also feel like listening to audiobooks, sometimes I can get spaced out. If I'm doing something while listening to it, I'll get a little bit distracted and I feel like I miss things. I sometimes need to make sure I'm paying attention and really fully lock in on the book if I'm doing an audiobook. And this one, I feel like I failed a little bit on that department. I'm going to continue reading the series on audiobook because I'm getting them from my library and I'm probably going to read the whole thing through but I do think I want to reread this book physically eventually so I can get the full idea on if like this is a five-star book. I can't say it is so far like I think it's four stars highly enjoyable. It is set in the 1920s I believe in New York another New York book and it's a bit of a murder mystery. Our main character Evie she moves to New York to live with her uncle because her parents got mad at her and that was the punishment she needs to go live with her uncle. She actually has a bit of an ability. If she takes an object that someone owns and like holds it for a second, she can actually come up with all your secrets. <laughs> whoa. That ability that she seems to have that she has been hiding all her life might actually help in solving these murders. And I really enjoyed the characters, but at the same time, I feel like I would have loved them even more if I either paid more attention to the audiobook or read it physically. I actually have a first edition copy of this book. It's really fancy. I love this edition, but I kind of want to get all of the paperback copies of the new covers eventually just so I can have them in my collection and maybe annotate them one day. So you probably guessed it, but the book that I read half of that I just didn't quite finish because literally finals week has been too much and there's just no way I could have finished it. Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I started rereading this literally November 3rd. I'm loving it. I'm annotating it and I was having a really good time. Like I love this book so much. I already know it's going to be a five stars so it's not really a situation where I'm like curious to see if my thoughts have changed. I genuinely read this book at a time where I was kind of stressed out, you know, the election, and this book made me happy, and I knew it would make me happy. There's nothing changed about this book and my feelings on it. The basic premise of this is if Trump never won, it is the 2020 election. The main character, Alex Claremont Diaz, he is biracial and bisexual, but he does not know it quite yet. His mother is the president of the United States and he's about to graduate college and maybe follow in his mother's footsteps for politics because he's kind of interested in that. Here's where it gets started. He has a feud with Prince Henry from the UK, United Kingdom. Prince Henry and him just like, they don't like each other. They've seen each other several times throughout the years, you know, that things happen. This year is the royal wedding. They see each other at the royal wedding, kind of get in a little argument, like a snippy snide comment sort of thing. And then they whack each other a little bit and 
they fall into the freaking wedding cake that's seventy thousand dollars that's super embarrassing it's in the press and they decide they need to pretend to be best friends in real life and get like a bunch of paparazzi photos and things so it can seem like they don't hate each other to the public because right now they don't look so good right now during that they start to fall in love with each other i think there was just like a little bit of jealousy or something going on there and once they actually get to know each other they realize they have a lot in common and they also just really think each other are amazing and adorable and I just really loved this because both characters are standout characters to me. I just thought the relationship was so beautifully done and once again the length of it was just perfect for me because I really am that kind of person who values like character development and just taking time to get to know a character. I'm not really a plot person. I do like a good plot but if we have a good plot and stupid characters that I don't give a shit about I don't like the book you know like that's just not my type of book. So those are all the books that I read in November. Hopefully I can read more than that in December. I probably will but we'll see. Stay tuned for that. Definitely subscribe so you can freaking see when I upload it obviously. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Like it, comment down below. Have a good day. Please subscribe. Make sure to follow all my social media which are linked down below and go click the bell button which is right by the subscribe button which you should already clicked and goodbye.